While I'd love to play all of my games on my Steam Deck, the truth is that the Steam Deck just can't handle certain games. And pretty soon the Steam Deck will show its age. But even when that day comes, you can still stream your games to your Steam Deck. Welcome back to the Steam Deck Masterclass, Volume 9. If I could run all of my games on my Steam Deck, I certainly would. But there are a number of games on Steam Deck that don't work for a number of reasons. First and foremost being that the games aren't compatible on Steam Deck. Maybe there's some unforeseen issue with the game and Proton. Or perhaps even worse, anti-cheat issues. And of course, there are some games that technically run on Steam Deck, but perform poorly no matter what your graphics settings are. This is where game streaming comes into play. The idea behind game streaming is that the game technically runs on different hardware. The video footage is then streamed over to your Steam Deck over the internet and you can control the game using your Steam Deck controls. That's the idea anyways. The most common form of streaming is using a streaming service, something like GeForce Now or Xbox Game Pass or PlayStation Now or Amazon Luna or the ill-fated Google Stadia. Those companies run their own servers and run the games on their own hardware and they stream it over to you. Generally speaking, these cost a monthly fee and you don't have to worry about having your own hardware at all. All you really need is a device with a browser and the Steam Deck just so happens to be a device with a browser. So yes, you could add Google Chrome to your list of non-Steam games. You can even make web shortcuts that take you to a full screen version of that same website that at the end of the day is still running in Google Chrome. And I do have older tutorials for that that still work. And if you do end up liking this video or perhaps the entire Masterclass series, please give this video a like, subscribe to this channel, and spread the good gospel of high tech lowlife to all of your friends. This greatly benefits me in the YouTube algorithm and it lets me know that I'm doing well. But some dedicated streaming services do have applications in the Discover App Store. For example, this right here is GeForce Now Electron, an unofficial NVIDIA GeForce Now client. It's essentially a web wrapper that redirects you to NVIDIA's GeForce Now website, allowing to run games from there directly. It's got some additional features such as Discord rich presence. You can easily add it to Steam by searching up in your start menu and then right clicking and press add to Steam. To get Steam Deck controls working, you'll need to right click the shortcut you made in Steam, press game properties, and then add this line to the end of the launch options. This lets controller support work on Steam Deck. It's that easy. Among all of the cloud-based streaming services, GeForce Now is probably my favorite. It gives me access to an existing portion of my Steam library. I suppose the main caveat is that if you're not paying for a subscription, you, there is a queue, and you can only have one hour sessions, but there's nothing stopping you from playing the game for an hour and then going back into the queue. There's also one particular quirk, that being when you finally get into the queue, you have to sign on to Steam again. And this is despite the fact that GeForce Now actively syncs with your Steam account to get library information. It's a minor annoyance if you use a QR code to sign in, but it's still somewhat annoying. And if you play a game like Destiny 2 with an end user license agreement, then you have to agree to that, which is also somewhat annoying as well. But hey! the game plays, and it's actually not a terrible experience. I can definitely feel some milliseconds of lag when I pull the trigger, and you know, when it actually fires. It's not instantaneous, but I found in my experience the delay was consistent, which means you can work around it. But again, this is over the internet, so your mileage will vary. I have gigabit internet service as well as Wi-Fi 6 on my router, so it's not, so it's not necessarily representative of like the average person's internet speeds in America, but it's also like not a super top end setup as well. If I had the faculties and the setup to record milliseconds of delay, I would do that, but I still need to figure that out. So yeah, that's GeForce Now. Let's cover some other popular online streaming services. Amazon Luna is one such a service, and it's basically replaced Google Stadia. Unlike Google Stadia, Amazon Luna is a subscription service, sort of a true Netflix but games experience. It is a separate membership, but if you have Amazon Prime, then you have a selection of games you can access for free. But it's in a rotation, and honestly, the selection you have as an Amazon Prime user is a lot smaller than, say, just subscribing to Amazon Luna. Unlike GeForce Now and some of the other services that'll be featured in this video, there is no easy application to install from, well, the Discover app. Thankfully, Amazon Luna is a website you can use. Amazon Luna only works with Chromium-based browsers. 
Unfortunately, Amazon Luna does not work with Firefox. That said, adding a web shortcut is really simple these days. It used to be kind of a pain in the butt to do, but my preferred method these days is using the Hero Games Launcher. Wait, the Hero Games Launcher? Yes, that Hero Games Launcher. That Hero Games Launcher that basically more or less manages your GOG and Epic and Amazon games. That one, yes. But it can also manage games in the form of loose executable files and also make web shortcuts. Since I've already got Hero Games Launcher installed, and I've got prior videos showcasing how to add web shortcuts to your Steam Deck, I figured it'd be a good time to showcase a new method of adding web shortcuts. In the Hero Games Launcher, press Add Game, and then you'll be greeted with this menu. Most of it is self-explanatory, but to put in a web browser shortcut, you'll need to click on the Select a Platform version to install, and select Browser. And here you'll want to put in the URL. The field also auto-populates with HTTPS, so you don't have to worry about that. What I also like to do is grab a user agent. In this case, I'm grabbing a Chromebook user agent. You can find them through Googling it. All you have to do is copy and paste it into the custom user agent field right there. And since I'll be using this in game mode, I like to set launch full screen on. And for the artwork, you can grab the artwork directly from Steam Grid DB. In this case, I just copy and pasted the URL from Steam Grid DB directly into the Hero Games Launcher. Also, don't forget to change the name of the game because I left it as title and yeah, don't do that. Like any other non-Steam game you can install through the Hero Games Launcher, you can add these web shortcuts to Steam directly. There's also a very handy setting that you can enable in the settings menu. It's called Add Games to Steam Automatically. You have to scroll down quite a bit to see this option, but trust me, when you enable it, it makes things so much smoother. And you're done. If done correctly and you've added it as a non-Steam game, then it should just work. Controller support also works out of the box, no other tweaking necessary. I'm not gonna lie to you though, Amazon Luna's selection of games, even its paid subscription, is somewhat lacking compared to some of the other services. Even compared to the now defunct Google Stadia, I think the library in Amazon Luna is straight up worse, unless you like Ubisoft titles. Of all the games I have access to, probably the most interesting one here is Kunai. It's a game I've never heard of, but I love ninjas and stuff, so like yeah, I'm gonna try it out. Oh my god, is that an advertisement in the loading screen? I have Amazon Prime already. So first impressions are really nice. The pixel art in this game looks crisp, but doesn't look compressed or anything of the sort. This game is a great candidate for testing Amazon Luna's input latency because these sorts of like 2D platformer games are very input intensive. You gotta have good input controls, otherwise these games are kind of unplayable. And for what it's worth, it plays pretty well. You know, streaming has gotten a lot better since I last tried it out. Obviously, I would still prefer playing a native version running on the Steam Deck instead of through Amazon Luna, but this ain't bad. It's not bad at all. And the game is really fun too, I guess that also helps too. You can also play Fortnite as well, you would have to sync your Epic account to Amazon Luna. I'm not particularly interested in, you know, the battle royale these days, but I mean, there's like a million different modes in Fortnite now, it's like Roblox now. And of course, let's not forget about Game Pass. Unfortunately, the only way to play Xbox Game Pass games is through streaming. Or you could install Windows, but that's not this video. You have two options, Greenlight and XB Play. We're gonna focus on Greenlight because it's the free application. I hear XB Play is also better, but it's also $7, and honestly, I wouldn't try XB Play without first trying out Greenlight. You know, just to see if streaming is a viable option for you. Setting up is pretty simple, and I highly recommend setting it up while in desktop mode. When you first launch the application, you'll be prompted to sign on to your Microsoft account. Once you sign into your Microsoft account, you'll see your consoles and your xCloud library. But be sure to add Greenlight to your Steam library first. As you can see here, I added some artwork and made the shortcut just generally nicer. You can do this easily with the Steam Grid DB plugin. Anyways, as you can see here, the application is launching and it, you know, looks the same in game mode. Except you need to make two changes to make things work smoothly. Unfortunately, this menu cannot be operated with a controller. You will need to use your mouse. You should set the right trackpad to mouse. You should also have the right trackpad click become left click so that you can, you know, click on things. Also, to pull up the Xbox dashboard, you'll have to reassign any of your buttons to N, like the keyboard button N. I use my left trackpad for that purpose. Anyways, it's about time we try a game out, so let's try a game that I hardly play, that honestly doesn't really run that well on Steam Deck. 
let's do Starfield. And to be fair, Starfield doesn't run that well on Xbox either. This is running the Xbox version of Starfield, so obviously one of the biggest caveats is you cannot mod, you know, an xCloud version of Starfield. That's just how it is. Also worth mentioning is that if you have GeForce Now, you can actually run Game Pass games through GeForce Now, running the PC versions. Kind of odd, isn't it? In most cases, I think GeForce Now would be preferable, but there are some games on console Game Pass that aren't available on PC Game Pass. There's also an application for PlayStation Now, but I don't have PS Now, so I can't exactly cover it. At least, that's what I'd say if I didn't have any friends with PlayStation Now. Wait, they folded PlayStation Now into PlayStation Plus? Whatever. The only way to stream from PlayStation Plus is to download an executable file from PlayStation's official website. As you may have guessed, it's Windows only. But the cool thing about SteamOS and also Linux as a whole is that Proton and Wine exist, so you could run this application on Linux through that. There's a great number of ways to install Windows programs on your Steam Deck. You could do it through Steam directly, you could do it through Lutris, or in this case, I'm going to do it through the Hero Games Launcher. Hero Games Launcher makes it super easy as well. It even gives you the option to run the installer first. So if you do decide to run the installer first, which by the way, you should run the installer first, the program will install itself as it would, say, on Windows. If you do do it through the Hero Games Launcher, it will go into your Wine Prefix folder that's defined. This is, of course, assuming you install it in the quote-unquote C drive, so to speak. That said, if you don't want to use the Hero Games Launcher and you just want to do it through Steam directly, you can follow this guide from Reddit. Links in the description down below. Anyways, this is PS Plus running in game mode. Honestly, I think PS Plus is like the worst service. I experience more input latency with this service than I do with any other service, and I'm not sure why. Also, the user interface is just terrible. Like seriously, in order to find whatever game you want to find, you have to search for it manually, scroll through menus and menus. Like seriously, Sony didn't bother putting in a search bar? That's terrible. There's one game that I really want to play from the service, and you could probably guess what it is. That's right, Bloodborne on Steam Deck. Technically, Bloodborne streaming through a PS4, through Sony's servers to a Steam Deck. I'm sure this would run a lot better if I were streaming this from my own PS4 to my Steam Deck, but you know, fun fact, I don't even own a PS4 anymore. I also don't have a PS5, so don't ever expect me to check a Chiaki for Deck because I don't feel like buying a PS5 for that. There you go, cloud streaming for three of the most popular services, all available on Steam Deck. For those that maybe want to play some games, but you know, some games don't run well or even at all on Steam Deck, this is a great option. And with a decent internet connection, games actually run pretty smoothly. Streaming a game also uses far less system resources than actually running the game on the system. So you can push graphics a lot higher because these games aren't actually running on Steam Deck. I wouldn't recommend it for any super competitive games, but like, these games are very playable. Even like action-oriented games like Destiny 2 are more than playable. I wouldn't do Trials of Osiris, I wouldn't even do any raids. But in theory, you could. I know some people want me to cover streaming games from your own hardware, like your own gaming PC or whatever, but that'll have to be a separate video because this video has been running for too long anyways. If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos. And if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high tech low life with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high tech low life, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description 